In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use GIMP to create ice text. Let's start by creating a new project. So go to the File menu and select New. Set the width to 2560 and the height to 1440. And then press OK. Initially, we are going to set the background to black. So to do that, click on the Bucket Fill tool, make sure that the foreground color is set to black, and then click in the canvas area. And now let's add some text. So click on the text tool, and to change the font, click on this button. And I'm going to select Sans Bold. Then set the font size to 800 pixels. And then next, set the color to white. We can do that by just swapping the foreground and background colors by clicking on this double arrow button. The font color shown here will change to the foreground color that is set here. Then to add the text, click on the canvas area and type your text. Then move your text to the center by clicking on the Move tool, and then drag the text into position. The next thing that we are going to do is to round the corners of the text and make the text thicker. So right click on the text layer and select Alpha to Selection. This will select the outline of the text. Then click on the Select menu and select Feather. The value that you enter here will depend on the size of the text. We want to use a value that is one-tenth of the font size. Since the font size is 800 pixels, I'm going to set this value to 80 pixels. Now you can turn off the text layer by pressing the button that looks like an eye next to the layer. Then create a new layer by pressing this button right here. Set the layer fill type to transparency and press OK. Now we are going to fill in this selection. So click on the Bucket Fill tool. Make sure that the foreground color is set to white. Click on the button down here next to Fill Whole Selection. And then click inside the selected area. Since we feathered this selection earlier, you can see that the text fades around the outside edges. Now we want to select the very outside of the text. To do that, click on the Select by Color tool then click in the background area. This tool allows us to select similar colors. Since we clicked in an area of this layer that is transparent, using this tool allowed us to select the entire transparent background area. But what we actually want to select is the text instead of the background. So to do that, just click on the Select menu and select Invert. And now the text is selected. Now let's fill in this selected area. So click on the Bucket Fill tool, make sure that the foreground color is set to white, and then click inside the selected area. And now we are going to make a duplicate of this layer. To do that, click on the Duplicate button right here. The only reason that we created a duplicate layer is so that we can come back to the original layer later in order to select the outline of the text. So for now, Let's just turn off the original layer. We can do that by clicking on the button that looks like an eye. What we need to do now is to get the feathered selection that we had before. So right click on this bottom text layer and select Alpha to Selection. Then click on the Select menu and select Feather. It's already set to 80 pixels, so we just need to click OK. Now click on the top layer to select it and then press the Delete key on the keyboard. And now the outline of the text is feathered and the center of the text is transparent. We're done with this selection now, so you can remove it by clicking on the Select menu and select None. Now we need to add some cracks in the ice, and we're going to do this by using the Flame Filter. So first make sure that the foreground color is set to white. Then create a new layer by pressing this button. Make sure that the Fill Layer Type is set to Transparency and click OK. Make sure the new layer is selected and click on the Filters menu. Then select Render, and then Nature, and then Flame. 
We need to make a few changes to the default settings for this filter. Start by moving the brightness slider all the way up to its maximum value. Then click on the Edit button. Down here you will see a drop-down menu. Click on it and select Bent. Then you can repeatedly press the Randomize button until you find an image that you like. When you've found a good image, then select it by clicking it. Then press OK. Now click on the Camera tab. We're going to zoom in a little, so move the zoom slider up to a value of about 1. Now press OK. Next, click on the Filters menu and select Edge Detect and then Sobel. Then click OK. Now click on the Colors menu and select Invert. Now we have a layer that we can use for the cracks in the ice. We are going to be copying the cracks from this layer onto the text layer by using the Clone tool. But first we need to select the outside of the text. We are going to select the text on this layer right here. So right click on this layer and select Alpha to Selection. You can see here that the outside of the text is now selected. Now we're going to use the Clone tool. So click on the Clone tool and then select the top layer that has the cracks that we created. Then come over here to the Tool Options and set the Brush to Hardness 075 and increase the brush size until it's about the same size as the width of the text. Now find a spot in the cracks that we created to use for our clone source. This area right here looks good, so hold down the control key and click the mouse button. This sets the source for the clone tool. Now we can turn off the layer with the cracks by pressing the button that looks like an eye. We are not deleting the layer, we are just turning it off so that it is not visible. Now select the text layer that we will be copying the cracks to. Then position the cursor to the point where you want to start copying and press and hold the mouse button. Then move the mouse button until you have covered the first letter with cracks and then release the mouse button. Then repeat this, press and hold the mouse button while you copy the cracks. Then repeat this for the last two letters. We're done with the selection now so remove it by clicking on the Select menu and select None. Now we're going to add some snow to the letters. Let's put the snow on a new layer, so press this button to add a new layer. Make sure Transparency is selected and press OK. Now click on the Free Select tool that looks like a lasso. Then just draw the outline of a snow drift on top of the G. Then click on the Bucket Fill tool Make sure the foreground color is set to white and click inside the selected area to fill it with white. Then next we're going to add shadows to the snow. So click on the airbrush tool and set the foreground color to black. Since the background color is already black, we can just swap the foreground and background colors by clicking on this little double arrow button. To prevent the shadows from being too dark, Change the opacity of the airbrush tool to about 50 using this slider. Let's also decrease the size of the brush a little using this slider. Then airbrush a shadow onto the right side of the snow, a couple of places underneath, and the bottom right side. We're done with this selection now, so you can remove it by clicking on the Select menu and select None. Then click on the Free Select tool again to make the next snow drift. Draw the snow here, click the Bucket Fill tool, set the foreground color to white by clicking on the little double arrow, click inside the selection to fill it with white, then click on the Airbrush tool and click the double arrow button to set the foreground color back to black, and then Airbrush Shadows onto the right and bottom side of the snowdrift. Then remove the selection by clicking on Select and select None. I'm going to pause the video now while I finish adding the rest of the snow to the letters. I finished adding the snow drift to the letters. The next thing we're going to do is to change the background color using a gradient. So click on the Blend tool. Make sure the gradient is set to FG to BG, which is foreground to background. 
Then click right here to set the foreground color. Set a blue color. I'm using 145ED7. Then click OK. The foreground color should now be blue and the background color should be white. Now come over here to the right side and select the bottom layer. Then position the cursor right here, press and hold the mouse button, drag down to about here, and then release the mouse button. Now the last thing that we are going to do is to add some snowflakes in the air. So click on this button to add a new layer, make sure transparency is selected, and press OK. Then move this layer to the top by repeatedly pressing the green up arrow until the layer is at the top. We need to fill in this layer with a black color, so make sure that this new layer is selected and then click on the Bucket Fill tool. We need to set the foreground color to black, and we could do that by just clicking on this little black and white button here, which will set the foreground and background colors to their default values. Then click in the Canvas area to fill it in with black. Now click on the Filters menu and select Noise, and then HSV Noise. Then move the value slider at the bottom all the way to the right and press OK. Then click on Filters again and select Light and Shadow and then Sparkle. Set the spike points to 10 which will make some of the snowflakes look a little brighter. Then press OK. Then click right here to change the layer mode and set it to Screen. And now we have our ice text on a snowy day. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.